Now that we've seen an example of working out the magnetic field based on long wires, it brings us to a type of questions that textbooks are particularly fond of, which involves two wires parallel to each other. In the case of A, they have a certain amount of current through each of them, and they're so far apart, in this case, D equals 0 0.1 meters, 10 cm. And in this case, they both have a current. This is 2.0A, we'll call that I1, and we'll call that I2, 5.0 amps. And in the case of part A, they are going in the opposite direction. And they want the force per unit length. Because what's happening here is you have really long wires, and this one wire with a current is going to make some magnetic field. Using your right hand rule, you can find that the magnetic field would come out of the page on this side and then go into the page on that side, which then the second wire will feel a force based on that magnetic field and vice versa. So in that sense, it's a way of getting you to really think about which one is the current that creates a magnetic field versus which one is the current that feels the magnetic field. To complete it all, we have I cross B gives you F. So in these kind of cases, your F would go out. And if you fall through, it'll be the reverse for the other wire. So they actually repel each other in this case. But that's kind of the end goal here is to help you get used to kind of partitioning which current to use where. So if we want this particular force that I've drew here, I want the force that acts on which current? It acts on current two. Cross B, and where does the B come from? The B comes from the other wire. So this B is given by that expression. And the current that's responsible for that is the first wire. So again, this is the force on current two due to the magnetic field created by current one. Sorry to be going so slow, but this is basically the whole key to all these questions. The rest of stuff is just things you've seen and putting you can put them all together. Technically, there are some absolute value signs here and there. And because we know how the direction works out already, we can just, instead of you know, defining IJK and doing cross product, we can just go for the magnitude approach. So in this case, we know current here is perpendicular to my magnetic field because my magnetic field goes straight in and out of the page. So we don't need that cross product there. And we put sine theta where we know it's 90. So we know that part is going to just we can just ignore that part. And so subbing things in, this is some random length L, which will divide over to give me force per distance times B. What is B? B is this thing over here. R being my, well, I have my distance over here for, and I have I1. So that lets us write F over L is equal to, we'll even sub in the numbers now. Here's I2, so that's my five amps times my four pi times 10 to the minus seven Newton per ampere square. We'll, we'll hopefully find out all the units work out. Then we have I1, which is my 2.0 amps, all over four pi times 0 0.1 meters. Amps cancel out and you're left with in fact, Newton per meter, as we expect. Four pi also cancels out. Sometimes it's nice to have such things. And there we have it. Then to specify the direction, since they don't give us any X, Y, Z, they don't tell us how these are oriented in space. All we can say is it's away from the other wire. And in these cases, it's only really one of two choices. It's either away from the other wire or towards the other wire. So that's part A and what you expect for part B, instead of it flowing in the opposite direction, they flow in the same direction. So everything works the same way, except that the direction is reverse. So you know the magnitude is exactly the same. And instead of away, you have towards other wire. 
Some students like to go in and memorize whether, you know, the same direction current attract or repel, but more to the point, if you want to free up some brain space, all you got to do is just to do the right hand rule a few times following through. So you take the one wire, find out what magnetic field creates at the other wire. And based on that magnetic field, you can work out the direction of the forces all using your right hand rules.